Thank you very much. G good afternoon, everyone. So in January 2017, the U.S. Uh, intelligence community put out this report uh, alleging that uh, Russia uh, tried to influence the 2016 elections. And uh, central to that campaign was the Internet Research Agency, which is a troll farm in St. Petersburg with uh, uh, links to uh, Russian intelligence. So how do they operate? Maybe we all know a little bit about that. Uh, they created thousands of fake social media accounts and flooded social media with lots of uh, fake news, very polarizing content made to get people uh, outraged, to sow division, and make people doubt uh, what is true, what is real, and basically um, create a lot of mistrust among the population. Uh, this uh, uh, IRA, the Internet Research Agency, was later uh, indicted in the Mueller probe um, that was investigating collusion between Russia and the Trump, Donald, Donald Trump campaign. Earlier this year, the website 538 released a trove of three million of these tweets uh, that they archived that was actually harvested by two American university researchers, and they put it out as uh, open data. So I was curious to see, within these three million tweets, were there any aimed at Canadians? Were the, these trolls trying to target and sow division among Canadians in any way? And it turns out they, they were, at a small scale, but they were. I found about 8,000 tweets among the three million that seemed to be aim, uh, uh, directed at Canadians. It's a small drop in the bucket, but it's enough for us to see what they kind of had in mind to get us to, uh, to hate each other and, um, and, and fight. Uh, just so you know, the, some of the code I'm going to uh, show here is on my uh, GitHub. Uh, it's on a Jupyter Notebook if you want to uh, look at it later in more, uh, more detail. So how do you find, among three million tweets, how do you find the ones that are aimed at Canadians? Well, I started with a list of keywords. And I compiled this list uh, based on talk, talking with uh, colleagues who know a lot about politics, uh, some of my sources who follow this stuff. And I came up with about 50 keywords that had obviously words like Canada and Canadian, but also people, Justin Trudeau, uh, political leaders, uh, Alec Manassian, the uh, main suspect in the Toronto uh, van attack, uh, polarizing figures like um, Ezra Levant of Rebel Media, uh, places, cities, provinces, hashtags that Canadians use to talk about politics, and uh, issues that were, uh, that were polarizing, things like pipelines and the Colton Bushi killing. And then I just created one big uh, regular expression pattern uh, for this. So this talk is really about the power of pandas, that when combined with regular expressions, it's really a powerful text mining tool that can get you answers quite quickly and quite easily. And I'm a journalist, I'm on deadlines, and I need uh, uh, fat, uh, speed and, uh, and ease. So I created just one big regex, uh, expression uh, separated by um, by pipes, each word, and I use pandas using the very powerful str uh, accessor function there that pandas has, which is an amazing toolbox for working with string data. It took about a minute to filter out the the, the Canadian tweets. Is that the most efficient way to do it? I don't know. Probably not. I'm a journalist, not an, uh, an optimization engineer. It worked for me, and I only had to do it once. Uh, quick. Um, <laughs> well, Mm. <laughs> quick, uh, quick preview of the data is what it looks like. The researchers who, who compiled this data did a really good job of categorizing, putting lots of different columns for a good categoriz ca categorization and filtering. So the first thing I did was uh, see how many tweets mentioned the words that I uh, came up with, right? And uh, not surprisingly, Canada, Canadian are the most frequent words in the tweets. Trudeau, places like Toronto, Montreal. Um, Hashtags like CDN Poly that Canadians used to talk about Canadian politics on Twitter. On Poly, they used to talk about Ontario politics. CBC was mentioned in 162 tweets, yay. <laughs> um, the, the researchers that uh, uh, categorized all the accounts based on a, a category that they came up with. And the most common one among these tweets aimed at Canadians were uh, these right trolls, right wing trolls. These are people who tweeted um, uh, right leaning uh, provocative uh, content. And the second one that was interesting, news feed. These are accounts that mostly tweet out, out news, just news, uh, nothing else, no opinions. 
why uh, the researchers thought that they were probably trying to make themselves look like trusted news sources and then every now and then uh, throw in something a bit um, provocative in there. Left-wing trolls were the third one, and then that was an interesting one, the fourth one, hashtag gamers. What is that? <laughs> well, these are accounts that uh, play games with hashtags, and I'm going to show you a few examples later. If I want to see what are the most common accounts, uh, uh, Pandas Day makes this quite easily with, uh, by grouping. Uh, the common, most common accounts, most active, and which category they belong to. And the top ones were these newsfeed accounts. That was interesting. They were just tweeting out news about Canada. A few right-wing trolls up there. And down here, there is that hashtag gamer content. It was like about the 10th most, um, most active uh, account tweeting to Canadians. Uh, regular expressions with pandas, it's a breeze to extract things like hashtags and uh, mentions, uh, users that are, are mentioned in tweets. And the most common hashtags using these tweets are pretty uh, neutral tame ones like news, sports, environment, right? These are probably hashtags that are very common, used in a lot of tweets, probably a way of for them, their content to get uh, attention. But here's an interesting one up here in uh, fifth place, make TV shows Canadian. Make TV shows Canadian, what does that mean? Well, that's one of those hashtags used by these hashtag gamers accounts that try to have fun with hashtags and do puns. Let's take a look at a few of them. It's rarely sunny in Toronto, but it's pretty nice, eh? Uh, How I Met Your Mountie, Canada's <laughs> best <laughs> curling crew. Uh, everybody loves poutine, Mountie Python. Uh, okay, clever, cute. Why would Russian trolls participate in these kind of hashtag games? Honestly, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but what's interesting, what's impressive, is their knowledge, like a nuanced knowledge of, like, of Canadian humor, of Canadian culture, right? Uh, you can tell that they did their research. What, what was the end purpose of this? We still don't know. This is up to, uh, up to conjecture, not my job. Um, to find, uh, I was curious to know the frequency of tweets per day. And okay, it's a one-liner for um, uh, with pandas. Uh, pandas makes it really easy to resample data uh, to different time periods. These are the number of tweets per day. And I plotted them out, and I found that they really spiked on three specific days. And these happened to be days that were big news days in Canada. The Fort McMurray fire, the shooting at the Quebec City Mosque, the um, spike in border crossings last summer when all these uh, people were trying to cross the border uh, seeking a refugee status. These were events that these trolls tried to exploit to try to get us all worked up. And uh, tweets have a lot of junk in them, all right? They have a lot of noise. They have hashtags. They have URLs. They have other user mentions. I was very curious to know what were the, uh, just the raw text of the tweet, like stripped of everything else. Again, regular expressions with pandas makes it a breeze to strip out things you don't want and just get what you need. And the most common just uh, plain text was blank, 230 of them. That's because I stripped out all the hashtags and, and URLs and that's what a lot of these tweets were. These uh, trolls just tweet out links and, uh, and user accounts. But then, then you get to the real meat of it. Um, that's the text that these trolls thought that they could really uh, get a reaction out of us. Canada forced to take drastic action to stop illegals from flooding in. Trudeau is forced to rethink his open borders policy. Breaking news, ISIS terrorist stabs cop hits four others with car doing rampage in Canada. That's what they thought that we would uh, respond to. Now these are very, not big numbers, there were only you know, 80, 60, 40 tweets in that. So, why would they do this? Did it work, right? Uh, did, they, did they get people to respond, to, uh, to, to, to react the way they wanted to react? Or was this just, were they testing the waters? Were they seeing, hey, let's see what Canadians respond to so we can really get them going on the next uh, election? Well, did it work? Will it work? I guess we'll have to wait for the next election to see, but I really hope not. And that's all I got. Thank you.
Thank you, Roberto. Uh, do we have any questions in the room? Yes. Sorry, how did you classify the accounts? How did you classify the accounts in the first place? I didn't. They, they came, the data came like that. Okay. So these, are these, these two researchers in the, I think, Clemson University in South Carolina, I might be mistaken, they harvested all these accounts, all these tweets, after they were these accounts were identified, and just before Twitter deleted them, they got all these accounts and they went through them and classified them themselves. Got it. How they did it, yeah. did they use machine learning, manually three million of them, I don't know, but it came all nicely prepared. All I did was analyze it. Yeah. I'm just curious, how often do your colleagues engage in such analyses? Is this normal for journalists to do, or is, are you unique in this? It's, it's a pretty new thing. Data journalism is a pretty new thing. It's, it's expanding. More and more newsrooms are, 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 um, are um, investing in it. At CBC, we have like four full-time data journalists, um, and more and more newsrooms are doing it because we see the, we're seeing the importance of it, right? There's more data in the world. We, there are stories to be told with them. Would it be possible for you to post facto look at who saw those tweets and if it changed the semantics of the tweets that they send afterward, like if it actually affected people, could you measure that somehow? It would be very hard. We don't know how. Maybe with, with uh, showing you know, retweet, retweet chains, right? With this data set, no, because each tweet did not have metrics on how often it was liked or retweeted. However, since then, Twitter itself released a trove of 9 million tweets right, from the IRA and from Iran as well, Iran intelligence. So um, you guys can uh, uh, go in there. Each tweet has its metrics of how often it was retweeted and liked. So that might be more telling than this data set here. So if you do find cool stuff, let me know. <laughs> do we have any more questions in the room? Has the Canadian government taken any steps to protect us in 2019? Great question. I, I contacted two Canadian agencies, uh, CSIS, and the other one is the Communication Signal. I already forgot the name, but it's sort of like the Canadian... Huh? CSC. CSC, thank you. Thank you. Uh, they said that they haven't seen a lot of strong activity on, uh, uh, on social media from these trolls to uh, target Canadians from, like, uh, you know, uh, other countries, but they got their eyes on it, but for, for now they said there's not a whole lot to, uh, to be alarmed about. Did they not really like care about us or Canadian politics? <laughs> it's, it's just, like, That's not, not for me to answer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Still got time. Thank you, Roberto. Yeah, thank you guys.